Brahman Maharshi once said that the highest form of meditation is silence. Therefore, he enjoined visitors and devotees to simply be still, to simply sit in the silence and be still. The essence of these non-dual teachings is actually very simple. It is that there is only one reality, one supreme, all-encompassing, never changing, though in some sense always changing, reality. From there, it is then said, Tatwam Asi, thou art that. Thou art this one supreme, uncaused, unconditioned, unborn. Seamless, all pervasive reality. And yet for many, many of us even, these simple direct teachings, these scintillating truths are not yet clear to us in our own experience. Therefore, meditation is simply a line, so to say, tracing the way back home. Accordingly, it may afford us, perhaps today, a simple, clear glimpse of what is always already here. It may seem to many of us today as if thoughts occur in the head, as if these thoughts are mine or also me, and as if whatever is beyond the bounds of thought is most surely it is held, not me, not mine. Over there is the world. It can seem as if the mind is in here, 
the body perhaps in some nebulous no man's land and the world out there. Consequently, it can appear as if in our own highly conceptualized account that the non-dual teachings must be somehow incorrect. And yet, let us open ourselves up to the possibility that as the Buddha once said, we are those who seem to have an upside down view of reality. If that is true, then meditation is but one mode whose point is to bring us back to the right side up view, which is more than a view of reality. We begin, we begin our investigation today with the nature and source of thought. The Indian sage Raman Maharshi once stated Apart from thought, there is no mind. Let us inquire together. Allow a thought to arise. It doesn't really matter what kind of thought it is. As you observe this thought, do you find any evidence for mind being before, outside of, or in any way in relation to thought? Do you discover something called a container or a theater in which the thought arose? Go on and allow another thought to emerge. Is it arising in your own direct experience in a container or in a theater? Or does it seem to arise in a vast open space? It might first seem as if mind, finite, limited mind, is what is witnessing the arising and the arrival of a thought. Take the label off that observer or witness. Do you find any evidence for the witness itself being finite, limited? mind. What is witnessing awareness really like?
perhaps a thought arose again and now you might know that the arising of the thought perhaps coincides with the temporary arising of mind but are you right now the mind as the diamond sutra says mind arises mind in the form of thought arises but i do not abide Mind arises temporarily in the form of a transient thought or stream of thoughts and subsides as the thought or thought stream subsides. Only ask yourself now, what is it that remains? What is it that has been here witnessing the arising and arrival of mind in the form of thought? Zargadatta once said, whatever is witnessed cannot be me. Whatever is witnessed likewise is transient. In our investigation so far, thoughts arise and subside. Thoughts carry the signature of mind, which arises and subsides along with the arising and subsiding thoughts. One step back, as it were, is witnessing awareness. Take your stand as witnessing awareness. See that everything, thoughts, sensations, perceptions, and so on, show up for you as if they were a gift offered up to you. Abide momentarily as witnessing awareness. What is this like? Begin to open yourself up to the very possibility that there is a sense of at oneness. Openness, vastness, energeticness, clarity, above all, a 
sense of at oneness. Experience the peacefulness of taking your stand as witnessing awareness. Can you see how all phenomenal experience is showing up for you, is showing itself to you? Every thought is like a velvety undulation and the vast ocean of the cosmos. Notice the sense of stillness as you take your stand as witnessing awareness. Everything seems to be alive. Nothing seems to be far away or over there. Everything is right here. flashing into life right here, sparkling with the sense of being an ordinary miracle. And now ask yourself the question, what is it that is prior to witnessing awareness? And be completely open to the question. If a thought arises, let it fall away if witnessing awareness arises let it too fall away what is it who is it that sees everything. Who is it that knows everything, including itself by virtue of being itself?
be very patient and very still. If mind arises in the form of thought, be the witness. And then be open to even letting go of being the witness. What is it like when even that is let go of? In other words, before the arising of all phenomenal experience, before the emergence even of witnessing of all phenomenal experience, what, as Wei Ning once so poignantly asked, is your original face? What is your original face. Sink deeply into the mystery, into the unfathomable, yet perhaps altogether most real. What is your original face. The face you had before your parents were born. Allow everything to be still, quiet, quiescent. Therefore, let go of all agitation, of all perturbations. of any form of restlessness. Just for now, let it all go. What is it that is here in the very depths of the stillness? What open secret is here?
if mind arises in the form of thought, just be gentle. You, the witness, see it off. What is it that is the host of all experiences, even prior to and beyond witnessing? Where does all of this come from? In what does it reside? To what does all of it return? We ask again, what is this open secret? Closer than the skin. More alive than the breath. more intimate than a heartbeat. Oh, what is it that is this open secret? The answer to which would put all questions to rest. Just abide here and not knowing. This open secret, this sweet and great mystery is closer to you than these words. Closer than a caress, closer than a kiss. It is sometimes said that it is not we who must seek 
the one reality by going into a world of objects. Rather, it is said, we must stop searching for this one reality among a world of objects. We must turn around and drop completely back dropping back we find home a home that had never left us but had seemed as if it must have been so far away so that when mind arises in the form of thought, it's as if the mind is searching in the wrong direction and accordingly is inadvertently going the wrong way. Therefore, the very gentle point is to just let it all go and to just be very still as we drop back into this one reality. And now notice a thought arising, whatever that thought might be. Can you see this time that the thought is, as it were, all draped in velvet? That the thought arises out of this one reality as though it were a velvety undulation, a velvety ripple, a velvety pleat in the fabric of being. Can you see this time around that the arising of thought is not a problem? Remaining open receptive, loving, compassionate. Can you also remain uninvolved in the birthing and disappearing of thought? how sweet it is to 
put thought in its place, to see it as a flickering in the vast night of being. To see thought as a momentary celebration of this one being. A celebration that is none other than this one being. And that is never even remotely apart from this one being. Every thought is like a child. Birth from the womb of one being, of oneness. Oh, far from being far from me, thought is always intimate. Can you be intimate with thought while remaining the matrix, the womb? the space holding the temporary emergence of thought aloft. Can you sense, if only slightly, the beauty of the appearance of thought, however seemingly mundane it may appear? It is the beauty of the one reality bodying forth into manifest reality. Thinking like breathing is simply the vibration of being, of supreme being. Thinking like breathing, like hearing, is simply the flashing forth the creative effervescence of this one reality. Thinking and hearing and breathing, are they really any different from stars, galaxies, comets? Planets, moon,
Yes, they are different in appearance and in composition, but are they different in their essence? Is it possible that they all share the same substratum? So that the seemingly very vast and the seemingly very intimate, perhaps, perhaps are all very intimate. In truth. Can you allow thought as it emerges? To go if it needs to go, if indeed it is unwholesome. And can you also allow thought if it emerges to knit itself into speech, if that is neat? and right to do. And can you allow thought if it arises to find its way to action? If the thought is wholesome and if the action is needful? Can you see how all these movements are also beautiful part of the same cosmic symphony. Can you therefore coordinate your thoughts so intimate, so intimate now with your words and with your actions so that they are all nothing more than beautiful expressions like calligraphic brush strokes, like Tai Chi movements, beautiful expressions that come forth from the deepest, most intuitive, most intimate understanding of this one pristine reality. How could it not be true to say that if there is one reality coming forth in the form of thought and then perhaps two in the forms of words and actions, how could it not be true that all these should be emanations of love? Can we take from the wonderful Taoist sages, not just the idea, but the actuality of fundamentally syncing up and coordinating our words and our actions with the Tao, the Supreme Way? Can we allow our way to be the way? Can we allow personal consciousnesses to be so utterly suffused with clear, wholesome thought, with virtuous conduct, 
with appropriate speech. So suffused with all of these that there is nothing but brightness and our way of being with all other sentient beings, beings who are never really other from us, never could be anything but us. As we find our way back home, can we see also that home is common to all of us, to all beings. From this vantage point, which is indeed no vantage point, can we begin to feel in the very marrow of our beings what St. Francis felt to such degree when he said, oh, oh, sister moon and oh, brother sun. And when he addressed all animals as being nothing but his brothers and sisters. Can we open ourselves up to the kind of fellowship that could not be any more true and that could not be any more intimate. When Jesus once said, love thy neighbor as thyself. Today, just now, right here, can we not feel a sweet intimation of what he was so resoundingly urging upon us? May we be as intimate with our thoughts as we are with all of our neighbors. Okay, you may open your eyes.